Okay. Hey everybody, welcome to Wild Care. It is Friday, it is rainy outside, and mm -hmm. here we have Melissa Toffelmoyer, mm -hmm. Wild Care's Ambassador Program Manager. I, of course, am Allison Hermans, the Director of Communications here at Wild Care, and Melissa's here with Sequoia. Mm -hmm. Melissa, what are we talking about today? We're talking about waterproofing, or lack thereof, for oh, the owls. Oh, so interesting. So, Sequoia, our uh, Northern Spotted Owl here, is 15 years old. And she came into wild care as a young owl, and what happened to her, she fell out of the nest or fell out of the tree, uh, hit her wing on the way down, and injured her tendon in her wing. And in doing so, fly silently to catch their prey. Now, uh, she is nocturnal. Not all owls are nocturnal, but Sequoia is here. And it depends on the region in which you find the northern spotted owl, what their preferred prey is. For up farther north, it's the um, flying squirrel. And for down here in Northern California, it is the wood rat. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we actually don't have the squirrel, the flying squirrels yeah. here. So the yeah. dusky footed wood rat is a delicious treat for these owls. Yes. They live in old redwood uh, growth forests. Uh, raise their family there. It's great habitat for them. They are threatened, mm -hmm. um, meaning that just above endangered and the threats to them are logging or habitat destruction. Um, wildfires, that's created by humans, not by nature. Mm -hmm. And of course the barred owl, which has bars on its feathers, where As sequoia. As to our pretty spots yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. So I thought it would be a good topic, since it's raining, to talk about waterproofing. It is raining here in Northern California in San Rafael, where we're located, just about 20 minutes north mm -hmm. of San Francisco. And it's a, it's a drizzly afternoon, and we're so happy to yes. see the moisture. If you're not familiar with the California climate, we don't get rain from March until approximately November. So mm -hmm. we're even a little late this year. Yeah, so yeah we're, we're, we're enjoying the wet. But do owls enjoy being wet? No, they do not. I bet. They do not. Um, the structure of their feathers is such that they are not waterproof. Uh, what happens is they give up waterproofing um, and gain silent flight. Oh, isn't that interesting? So the specialized feathers that mm -hmm. allow them to fly silently are what prevent them from being able to have that sleek waterproof coating that other birds mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. And so I have a demonstration. Cool. Demonstrations, I like a demonstration. So here's a turkey vulture feather. All right, okay. is that from Vladimir? That's from Vladimir. Excellent, <laughs> one of our other wildlife ambassadors. I'm sure you're familiar. Comes right out. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay, and then you do an owl feather. All right, is this one of sequoias? Uh, this is actually, I think a great horned. Okay. Well, hold on, let's try this one. <laughs> it worked much better in, yeah, well. Kind of hard to see. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to get, but basically the water is sticking to the feather in a way that it doesn't yeah. on the turkey vulture feather. And, and, and so what is that? Is it the barbules of the feather? Barbule, it's uh, just the structure of it. So this is um, the, the barbules of it. It distributes um, air quietly. So for flying silently. Right. You know, so they can survive uh, or they can fly a little bit in rain, but just not get completely drenched. Okay. If they get completely drenched, um, they will have to either climb up a tree or um, just try to seek shelter until they dry out. Because uh, you're not able to fly with wet clumped together feathers. No, you're right? not able to fly with wet clumped together Which is feathers. so interesting. Right, right. And um, so that's also important for her to keep her body temperature. So if she's completely wet, she's also not insulating, so she's not keeping warm. Yeah, it's interesting. One of the reasons that oil is so dangerous to birds, mm -hmm. especially seabirds, but any animal, any bird, is the um, fact that the oil causes the feathers to clump together, mm -hmm. which means that the water, the cold water, the cold air, mm -hmm. can get to the bird's skin. It's like having a great big gaping hole in your jacket and all of the rain and water and seawater come yeah. in through that hole. Yeah, and yeah. so for her body temperature um, for spotted owls, it's 87 degrees, whereas great horned yeah. owls go up to 102. Ooh, that's so, interesting. Do you yeah. know what a screech owl is? Uh, screech owl, I do not know. Yeah, okay. Um, but uh, I have a great different bunch of websites that I use. Yeah, but 87 yes, for her, and 86? how much for the great horn? 102. 102, that's a high temperature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and hawks are like 104. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah, when we handle them in the wildlife hospital here at Wild Care, you can feel that body temperature. If you if you're happen to be the person that has the lighter gloves to do the actual medical exam, you yeah. can feel that body temperature. It's very interesting. Well, and um, it's important too because you know, we talk about like when's a hard time to take care of these guys and usually it's they're built 
for winter and for cold. It's the it's the heat that really gets them. Mm -hmm. um, so that body temperature, um, you know, it can drop considerably. Obviously, if she's getting wet, and of course, and then add the cold, the humidity, and everything into that, um, and they can uh, definitely might end up here in our, our wildlife hospital. Right, absolutely. That is something that we see frequently mm -hmm. at wild care during, especially the initial rains. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll see hawks. I don't know that we've gotten a wet owl, and maybe that is because they're they're better at climbing. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Yeah, they can they can definitely um, climb when uh, inclement weather out, but they just choose not to hunt. Right. You know, they, they just can't fly. yeah. So they just want to stay in a nice dry spot um, until it uh, the rain stops, and then they can go hunting. Right. And a cool thing uh, to well, uh, many cool things about the owls is one of them is, um, and hawks can do this as well, is they can lower their body temperature so they can save energy. So when their food is scarce oh. or it's raining or bad weather is that they can lower their um, body temperature so they're not using as much energy. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. So she's such a beauty. I, it's it's a, an interesting day. If you've never seen an owl climb, um, I'm sure there are YouTube videos that will uh, you can you can take a yes. look. But I've seen um, baby great horned owls yeah. do it, and they use those sharp talons. We're gonna look at those sharp, amazing talons mm -hmm. that she has. I love her little fluffy. Um, sorry, I always hit the wrong thing when I do that. Uh, her little fluffy toes. So she'll use her sharp talons and her um, and her toes and then she'll use her beak too mm -hmm. and that allows her to actually climb mm -hmm. and that's something hawks can't do so again in the wildlife hospital here at wild care we frequently see wet you know bedraggled hawks coming in sure. especially during the initial rains when uh, young animals that haven't quite figured out their own waterproofing yet yes. they haven't quite figured out exactly what they need to do especially in california which is so interesting because you don't have uh, you know in our area in the bay area you don't have rain for you know six seven months mm -hmm. and so birds that were born this spring have never encountered rain i'm sure they're thinking the, to themselves the sky's falling what the heck is all of this wet <laughs> stuff and why is it on my feathers <laughs> yeah, yeah the sky's falling the sky is falling yeah and they have um in comparison to hawks they have the uh, reversible toe so they have two in the front and two in the back and the oh, reversible yeah. toe is this one right here She's like, goes minute, forward and backward and all the way around and um they lack this skin that we would have or that a hawk would have in between this toe and this toe and that's why they're able to go ahead and rotate it around like that. Interesting. Is that for catching prey? For catching as prey. As well as climbing? Yes, yes. For climbing, catching prey, holding on to, to branches. Um, yeah, so I always tell the kids to do bunny ears and pinchers and put it together. Not the best mouse trap in the world. Oh, so yeah. Pinchers. Bunny ears and pinchers. Yeah. And they're very powerful. Um, of course, most raptors or all raptors have powerful talons. Um, and super strong toes. You notice super the glove strong, that Melissa yeah. has here. Yeah, not that and Sequoia is upset in any way, and she's not talenting her, but it certainly can happen. It can, and probably one of the most um, powerful owls would be the great horned owl. Mm -hmm. um, so size does not equal power in the raptor world. So um, the grip or the PSI strength in a great horned owl is comparable to a golden eagle. Isn't that interesting? No. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, they will take over nests of eagles. That's, really? Yeah. So Eagles, you know I'm just red tail hawks. On you. They're like, I am just so strong. I'm not really quite <laughs> sure what the PSI of um, of of, she, of uh, Sequoia is, and I've been lucky enough not to get talent by her. Yep. Um, but right now, she's actually not gripping or doing anything like that. She's just sitting on my glove right here. If she chose to, she could definitely um, grip really, really hard. They also have a ratcheting system in their feet, so once they grab onto prey, and let's say the prey twitches, they, mm -hmm. they ratchet down, they keep ratcheting down until oh, the prey's done. tighter and tighter. Tighter and tighter, yeah. They are extremely effective at hunting. That yeah. is what they do best. They do, and this, um, you know, cold weather for uh, most raptors, you know, the prey's not out anyway, so they're just gonna sit really nice and uh, try to stay nice and dry until the weather warms up mm -hmm. and the prey's out. Um, where that's definitely a problem is snow like if you go over to you know um, areas where like in Tahoe and those places you mm -hmm. know with snow and everything like that um, it's very tough on especially hawks because um, when you have that real um, lots of snowfall right the mice in the rodents tunnel underneath it yeah. so they don't the hawks don't see the rodents underneath the snowpack but the owls can hear them oh of course because hawks are primarily visual mm -hmm. hunters and owls are primary primarily aural mm -hmm. hunters using mm -hmm. their ears uh, she has something weird about her ears tell us about she her does ears. so her ears are asymmetrical meaning mm -hmm. that one's higher than the other so one ear is higher than the other um 
basically so she can, you know, match it up. So it'll triangulate tell her triangulate, yeah. triangulate. Um, who knew I was going to have to use that? <laughs> from my, my high school has to have to use that. Um, but yeah, if they can match it up, you know, if it's coming high or low or left or right, and they just match that uh, using triangulation, they can tell exactly where that mouse is. So it really doesn't matter if they can't see him, so long as they can hear him, they can. Right. What about getting up out of deep snow? I would think that would be something of a challenge for wings. But yeah, it depends. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, there's a great National Geographic video clip on YouTube. Um, and I believe it's a great gray, and it shows how they hear just just the mouse underneath, and it lands, gets uh, it, and then takes off. So cool! I which would love to have. see a great gray. I've never seen a great. We gray. have great gray here, which is completely awesome. I so want to see one as well. Yes. Um, but yeah, so these guys are built for the cold. Um, it's the heat that really is mm -hmm. hard for us. It's something that we definitely have to watch for the men, depending on this uh, owl species. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, she. She's always like, hmm. <laughs> Suzanne says, triangulate for the win. Yes, triangulate exactly. for the win, yes. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> the, the owl that has the best hearing of any land animal is the barn owl. Ah, of course. So, Absolutely. and the more, um, the better they're hearing the, in the dark, the more asymmetrical their ears are. That makes perfect yeah. sense. Gives you more variability and yeah. from which direction the sound is coming. All right. So the water and rain and stuff like that, I mean, there are several disadvantages for the owl. Um, so feathers are for flight, for camouflage, and for heat, for warmth. So when they get wet like that and, and a torrential uh, downpour there, they lose two of those abilities. Yep. Um, yeah. But then again, you know, it's a trade-off, you know what I mean? Like the hawk and the, the owl pretty much balance it out, you know? Mm -hmm. um, some have better survival skills in different climates and right. different regions and you know the and what the about tropical owls do we know anything about them I that don't. might be something we should look up because you know i mean i've been down in costa rica um, and they have certain spectacled owls <gasps> and certain others i've worked with a spectacled but owl they may be more diurnal um gosh i can't re even remember yeah. if he was diurnal or if he was crepuscular but he was really cool because he had um, a cream colored chest and then brown wings and he camouflaged and you're thinking, how does he camouflage? Uh -huh. But if you were in the rainforest in the canopy and you have um, light coming through, rays of light, he actually does oh, camouflage. I think that's so interesting. I love how the feather patterns give them such great camouflage. Yeah. And she's amazing, Sequoia here, when she is in her enclosure or if you see a wild yeah. man spotted owl, the way they're able to blend in with the branches and mm -hmm. the shadows and the bark of their chosen right. habitat, the redwood forest. Is and the lighting phenomenal. and all of mm -hmm. it, really. Um, they say you walk under 20 owls before you actually see one, so that shows you how good camouflage is for sure. them. Um, even snowy owls, okay, you don't think about that, you're like, they're mm -hmm. white, but if you are in the snow, yep. that's They're fabulous. hard to see, having tried to see them many times, yeah. they are challenging <laughs> to like, see. This that's is a big, thing. dense owl, why can't I see <laughs> this? And he's on the ground, and it's yeah, well, daytime. Exactly. What is wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, but so she's got her head turned looking at you. Yes, she does. And tell us again how much of a rotation an owl has in their neck. 270 degrees. I um, find that amazing. Suzanne says spectacle owls are largely no nocturnal. Nocturnal, yeah. okay, okay. That makes sense because, you know, they have amphibians and everything at night. Yeah, um, that makes sense. So 14 bones in the neck where so we have seven. Oh. So the... Um, are able to do the 270 where the myth comes in that they can turn their head all the way around <laughs> as they can do it so quickly in either direction it looks like their heads are spinning. Right. But they're not. Um, and the reason that she does that uh, is because of the, this is a great horned owl, this is not a spectacled owl, but you can see how much those owl, uh, those eyes take up that skull. Oh yeah. And Huge. because of that, it fix, they're fixed in there. They can't move up and down like we can. Right. So right. she can't move her eyeballs, so she has to move her neck in yep. order to see. Isn't that such an interesting adaptation? It's a great adaptation. And she can just, uh, she can, you know, spin her, uh, her head around like that, but she can also spin it upside down and all sorts of cool things <laughs> to wherever <laughs> she's, uh, she's focusing on her uh, Every listening you're skills. looking at. Oh, she yeah. seems so calm. If you're just joining us, of course, uh, Sequoia is a northern spotted owl and she is one of Wild Care's wildlife ambassadors. Yep. She came into Wild Care 15 years ago. 15, yeah. We were just calculating. And she came in as the young owlet that had mm -hmm. fallen from her nest and damaged that patagic tendon on the way down, which rendered her unable to fly silently. So she wouldn't be able to survive in the wild. We treat, um, oh, we just licked our lips. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we treat a, uh, over 3,500 animals every year in the wildlife hospital, including a number mm -hmm. of wild northern spotted owls. And uh, 
of course the goal is always to release our patients occasionally you have one that would not be able to survive yep. that has a great temperament and you can just see how incredibly calm Sequoia is sitting here. <laughs> yeah, she's. So we do a lot of programs together, so I always refer to these guys as my coworkers. You I mean, I have the coolest coworkers. It's you true. Do. Um, including. And you're not talking about me. I uh, know I am yeah. talking about you because you are one of the coolest coworkers. <laughs> but our feathered coworkers. Indeed. Um, but we do this a lot, so she's just used to me um, talking and focusing on my voice, and she's very calm. Uh, Having worked with also a barred owl, I can definitely tell you there is two different personalities. Mm -hmm. um, she's very calm, uh, you know, just kind of checking everything out. Barred owls are much more aggressive, right. which is why I think uh, one of the reasons why they're out competing the uh, spotted owl here. Yeah. So their they're, they're personality is much, much, much more aggressive. Um, they're quicker to snap at you or click at you with their beak. I don't even um, think I've ever even heard Sequoia click. Yeah, no, no. I mean, she would. It would really have to be something for her to do that. Yeah. So most of the time, she's just a very cool, calm bird. Uh, but she does talk during the day, which I, I found was quite interesting. It's just chatty. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Every now and then, I'll hear her, and I'm like, Is that? Is that hers? <laughs> is that hers? Now, in the wild, uh, they wouldn't have a really great lifespan. Right. Um, anywhere from eight to ten years I always say right uh, and every year that they are still on that list you got to take that down a little bit but uh, hopefully with us you know she could live to be in her 20s um, when Let's you so. have um, animals ambassador animals you can double or triple their lifespan because one they eat healthy foods meaning that they eat rodents that are not poisoned right um, two is that we protect them from any sort of other predators another owl another spotted owl she would be prey for another spotted owl as well mm -hmm. and great then horned owls. great yeah great and horned owls are kind of like the gangsters of the owl world right. <laughs> um they just don't care you know and they're very very powerful um and then of course uh, when she gets sick if she gets sick she's actually quite healthy but when she does because we are at a wildlife hospital, we are steps away from emergency care for her. Right, exactly. Um, we have which, our veterinarian right here. Yes, yes. And what we, you know, I think what one thing that is uh, absolutely amazing about wild care is that you have so many different resources, so many different people that come from different parts of the country that have worked on different species. Mm -hmm. And what we don't know, we find out. Right. And we figure out, okay, who is the specialist on this? How do I, you know, do you have a connection? Do yep. you, you know what I mean? And um, that's what I really love because we all work together to, uh, you know, if she had an ailment or something that it, it wouldn't just be myself working mm -hmm. on it. It would be a giant team of all Great of us team. going, yep. you know, oh, I once worked with one and this is what works for this yeah. one. Or, and so that's, that's um, something I always like to point out when we talk about like behind the scenes at Wild Care mm -hmm. is, you know, these guys are taken care of by a team. Yep. Um, and we do a, a great job with them. We and do. With our wildlife hospital patients as well. She's gotten a little more alert. The furnace, the yeah. furnace just came on. She was, uh, she kind of perked up a little bit. Oh, you can see. I don't know if you can see here how wet that feather is. There, definitely it. saturated. Yes, I think I just had to leave it in the water a little bit yep. longer. Yeah, it's interesting. It kind of soaks the water up like a sponge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, the owls not being, and then you have your turkey vulture feather. See, you can still see is, the, the yep, little. The water kind of pools on it as opposed to getting soaked in by yeah. the feather of the owl. Isn't that so interesting? So See, I knew the trick would work. You I knew just, the trick would work. I knew it would work. Time. I'm like, I just needed to give it a little bit more time there. Um, well, I think we'll put give you guys a break. I know you probably have another program today. Sequoia does a lot of programs mm -hmm. because she's so incredibly nice to work with. Thank you for joining us, everybody. You can visit us online at discoverwildcare.org. My name again is Allison. This is Melissa. We have the beautiful Sequoia. Everybody stay healthy, stay well. Things are going crazy out there. So take care of yourselves and you will see you probably next Friday. I think we've kind of gotten yes. into the habit of doing these on Friday. Sounds good. So we'll do a live stream at one o'clock probably next Friday. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Stay well. Ooh, what's she doing? <laughs> oh, she sees something. Yeah, We're not going like, to go oh, away yet until yeah. we see what she's looking at. You want to you open your wings? Ooh. There you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> everybody take care. Thank you. Thanks.